What's going on, everybody? Uh, DNC day three. This has been the biggest night, in my opinion, and I'm sure in a lot of other people's opinion. Kamala Harris just got off the stage. Um, she just said her speech. She got officially nominated for vice president. Barack Obama spoke earlier. Uh, Hillary Clinton spoke earlier. We have so much to unpack, and we have a great panel here to talk about it. Ladies first, Tamika Mallory. You see her. She's on the front lines with everything. Um, very active, not just in voice, but in action. Michael Skolnick, one of our great political minds who, what I love about Mike is that he just, he breaks things down from our perspective. And uh, of course you see this guy always working in the studio. We actually taking, making him take a break, but uh, we got Jim Jones, another great friend of mine. Jim, what's up my brother? Woo, how y'all feeling? Yeah. Everything good, good. is great. Everything is great. Um, we, we're seeing right now um, the potential next president, the potential next vice president. I asked um, Tamika, I know you were still watching the, the speech while we were uh, setting up and doing our audio and visual test. What did you think about uh, Senator Harris tonight? I think that, um, first of all, thanks to everyone for having me on and I'm happy to be a part of this conversation with other folks. I was looking at Jim and I'm like, I love how we have transformed this politically correct Zoom thing because we like do whatever we want to do, <laughs> get the kids, eat, drink. And we're like, just ask the question. OK, and I'll like, answer you like, I, you, know, <laughs> you know, it is what it is. Like, what do you want to know? No, but, um, but um, I'm, I'm happy to be here and, and grateful for the opportunity to talk to people who I think like this is the real conversations that we better be having. Because if we don't have these conversations and these settings, we're going to be in big trouble. I think that honestly, and this is, I, you know, Michael Skolnick knows me very well. I'm always in trouble because I'm always saying something that I shouldn't say. I think that the fact that the convention has to be on TV and or however, because like it's real difficult for me to find it, but I'm not a tech savvy person. And I assume that there are other people like me who are having a hard time trying to like locate the link and get the information for where they're supposed to go and download the thing. I think it, it puts us at a disadvantage that is really, really scary and dangerous. And therefore, um, we have to be able to take, you know, those viral moments. You said, Shaheen, when we first came on that this is the biggest night. Michelle was the biggest night. Michelle definitely was the biggest night. Like that's just what it is because it was Michelle. Obviously tonight was extremely historic, extremely historic to have Kamala step up there to speak so well. She, she's amazing, like she can do that. You know, whether you agree with her politics or not, um, it's not, you know, you can get into that later, but just who she is, her level of intellect, her ability to carry a message um, and and just, you know, and she's, you know, she's got her own black girl swag, right? And so, um, so she's amazing. But I think Michelle on the night when she spoke, she sounded an alarm that is so hard core, like get up, get out into communities, wake people up and get them to the polls. And then what we heard here is uh, someone in, in, um, and Kamala, who speaks to this is what our admin administration is going to be focused on. These are our values. This is what we believe. So we take those two things and put it together. I think it's our responsibility as people who understand the danger of the moment that we're in to take that information to communities and go door to door and literally get Ray Ray to understand and Keisha what we heard and what we need to do in November and before November. Absolutely. Michael, let me get your take. I know you was tuned in as well. Yeah, I think tonight was powerful. I think President Obama was powerful. I think President Obama going after Trump. You know, we haven't heard President Obama in the past two and a half years really go after Trump in the way he did tonight. I thought um, when he said that, you know, President Obama and uh, President Trump uh, is not fit for office. And he's not, he can't grow into office because he can't. Uh, was finally some words we've heard from President Obama going after Trump in the way we wanted him to. Uh, and I think tonight he had enough. Uh, I think Senator Harris's speech 
um, as as Tamika said, was historic, uh, was powerful. I think the the story of Kamala and her sister Maya and their family is incredible. That both of them are incredible uh, women who have uh, had incredible careers. But you know, Shaheem, there was a, a young woman who spoke tonight who was a child, uh, Estella Juarez, uh, whose mother was ripped from their family. Their father was a I veteran of the U.S. services armed services and the mother was ripped away and deported. That story really, really touched me. And I think from a, you know, from the Democratic Party to uh, embrace uh, these stories, when years past they have not, uh, I think is a major step forward for, for the party, uh, but more importantly for the people who this president has damaged and their families. Uh, and even you know, if you saw in the background of Senator uh, Elizabeth Warren, she had BLM in the school uh, and um, the little play blocks of the school she was in. There were subtle messages throughout tonight uh, that I thought were really powerful and appreciative of the communities who are suffering, the communities that are hurting, the community that Donald Trump has attacked, um, and not just you know the vice presidential nominee and not just the former president, but real people who are hurting in this country. I thought uh, tonight uh, lifted their voices up. Yeah, Jim, I, I, kn I know you were working, man, but... Uh, you, you've been hearing about what's going on. I want to ask you, first of all, there, there was a movement even before uh, Kamala was announced as Biden's running mate. There were people like Puff, Timberland, uh, Dougie Fresh. It was like a whole petition going around from, you know, some of your favorite hip hop artists urging, urging Biden to uh, pick a black woman as his running mate. What did you think when you heard about his choice? Uh, I thought it was very strategic with what he has at, at, at stake. I mean, he's up against a hard battle. I don't think that um, beating down the Trump is going to be the easiest task for them. And the Democratic Party being not solely about the minority of people, but, you know, that's pretty much who fills up the democratic party as a lot of people of our color and it's it's um i'll I be trying to be real clean when it comes to politics and shit like that i don't be wanting to say the wrong thing just because i don't be knowing about everything but i'm just going to say this for the position he's in picking kamala mm -hmm. harris is one of the smartest things that he could have did for going up against donald trump being that he knows the color of our complexion holds a lot of power. And picking the right running mate along with kind of the right color is gonna help him out to win the presidential race. That's just my opinion. I'm just gonna call the ace when I see it. I'm not gonna dance around the uh the spectacle. It's a it's a white and black thing, and he I think he picked the right choice in in these circumstances. I wish that she had the power and the support of our people to actually run for president and be successful at it, but we didn't get there yet. But what we, where we at now is a very big step for us as a people for even her to be running with that man to That's get in that presidential office. Yeah, I mean, she, she definitely tried. She definitely tried to get into the- uh, Yes, she did. Yes, she did. Yeah. And that yeah, didn't go- Even in the way, like I saw some images today of some things that I would not even mention um, here, disrespectful images uh, against Kamala, uh, and obviously, you know, trying to hit the Biden campaign, but using her uh, in, you know, and sexualizing her, right? Which is what happens all too often with Boy, women. I saw, I saw that today too. Yeah, with women, Especially. and particularly women of color. And I, but, you know, of course, I agree with. Jim, that, you know, this was a very strategic move. It wasn't, and it also didn't just happen. There were black women who've been meeting. I've been a part of the groups of black women who've been meeting, organizing Valicia Butterfield Jones. Uh, we were actually led by Jotaka Edie uh, and a number of women. I'm not even gonna get myself in trouble by saying a bunch of names, but there were a number of women who worked really hard to make it clear to Joe Biden that he could not go in a different direction. He had to choose a black woman. We have been uh, 90 plus percent of the vote too many times for our community or our, you know, our, our, for us as black women to be disrespected 
uh, to be passed up. It was time. Uh, and I think Kamala is more than capable, as were the other black women. So if he had chose, you know, uh, 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 Karen Bass, um, Keisha Lance Bottoms, Stacey Abrams, these are very capable women. Uh, and that's just what it is. Like black women, we're capable of doing every damn thing. That's what we do. Uh, and so, um, you know, I think he did make a strategic move, but I also know, and I hope, and I, I hope Michael uh, shares this view, that there has to be a real conversation to happen with communities because there's still a disconnect between a historic moment and what people feel this, this moment will mean on the ground. So people are still trying to figure out, yes, yeah, cool that Kamala and, and her being in this position, this is a historic moment. I understand it. I know the threat that we're up against because I'm in the weeds. But there are some people who just want to hear, first of all, an acknowledgement of things that they have issues with from the past in a real detailed way. And they want to be able to see it juxtaposed, if you will, to what is going to happen now. Like, what is the new way forward? And so I think there is some work that has to be done from the, the Biden campaign to get that message out there and to make sure that Kamala does not get reduced to a woman who is now vice presidential candidate. And she and this is super historic and not a policy maker, a light, a, a world changer. Um, and a powerful woman who can help President Biden be all that he can be. That's what I hope, we, you know, we, we need to get there and make people feel like they're a part of that movement. Yes. yes, you're absolutely right. Black women can make a brother feel like Superman. Trust me, <laughs> I know that for a fact. But I think that it's not just about an election. I feel like it's more of a war to try to get the wow. proper people inside of that seat as uh, Tamika just said that it's very hard for people to actually get to see the actual democratic uh, convention on, on the screen. Like you gotta go through the loops and holes or as you see it, they're closing down the post office quote unquote for a couple of months for what, right? When the election is about to happen next month and there's nothing open. So people have to use the postal service to get their votes on, on some of these situations. So now they're going to take that away from getting the vote. And then you go to these voting places. It's taking hours and hours and hours and hours for people to actually get in. And then there's a time constraint and then it cuts off and now nobody can get in. So all of these things are hap happening, but they're happening kind of in Trump's favor. Then you have um, a person like Kanye, and I love Kanye, and I know he's very adamant about the things that he does and things like that, but I don't know if he understands what he does when he does that. Like, it kind of helps our chances at getting into the right people in the office because the votes that will possibly go to him should kind of shorten the votes that's going to us to kind of put the right people in it. So it's just a lot going on, and you know the the media plays a big part in it. And Donald Trump is not a stupid person; he's been one of the richest people that I've known since watching the TV in the '80s. Being rich comes with a lot of other people that are rich and a real big support systems. A lot of things that we don't see and we'll never see. That man is a little bit more than Donald Trump. He's he's ill from where how we look at it. Now he puts in the community a shitload of money, knowing that. Nine times out of ten, these people in the community are not going to go vote anyway. So what do they do at the time of this? He has an opportunity to put a thousand dollars in everybody's pocket every week, and now everybody's out there getting Trump, getting drunk, talk about nigga Trump got us lit. Now, if he does it again, do you think the niggas in my hood and the females in my hood are going to be quick to go to the election polls to vote? Yet or let alone who they're voting for, because we really didn't have the knowledge of what to do when we go voting or the knowledge of what really a Democratic person is or what really a Republican is. We just hear what goes on in the media and we see that Trump is the president. Everybody's saying he needs to get out of office. But Trump has got the whole hood popping for the whole summer. So now that makes people feel like mm, I'm not even going to vote. That takes away from the power that we have to put the right person, people in, in, in pocket. We, we, I mean, I don't hope, hope I'm not rambling on here. I'm just I, I'm saying the things well, that I observed. Yeah, well, one of the things, and first of all, I got to acknowledge, Jim, you made some great points. I got to acknowledge uh, the legendary Bun B. He just joined us. And uh, Bun, Bun is now this uh, 
Bun is not just one of the greatest on the microphone. Hey, he's, uh, he's he's one of our hip hop superheroes, man. He, he's up. been on the front line um, in, in the wake of George Floyd, him and, him and Trey The Truth, along with Tamika, uh, was so active um, with the protests and calling for justice. Bun, thank you for joining. Uh, so much stuff that we could talk about right now. Um, one of the things that came up tonight was voter suppression. That was the first thing that uh, Kamala said. Let me read her quote. She says, so I think we need to ask ourselves, why, why don't they want us to vote? Why is there so much effort to silence our voices? And the answer is because when we vote, things change. When we vote, things get better. When we vote, we address the need for all people to be treated with dignity and respect. And, um, you know, we, we see it with these mailboxes being taken away now. We saw it uh, earlier this year with some of the local election, elections. Atlanta was crazy. We were supposed to have T.I. on tonight. He couldn't make it. But um, the voter suppression is very real. Uh, I want to ask Bun if you could speak on it. And then, Michael, I want you to speak on it as well. Well, I mean, look, voter suppression has been a tool of the oppressors, you know, for hundreds of years, right? They understand that the power comes with who sits in these elected offices. And so they've tried to thwart black efforts to, to be a part of that conversation, you know, you know, since the early 1800s, right? Um, once black people got free, um, they didn't want them to, just because you're free doesn't make you equal to us, right? And so we were denied all of the basic things that, the Constitution that they love to scream about was supposed to give to us. But voter suppression in, in, uh, nowadays is not just about making it difficult for you to vote, right? It's, it's about making you indifferent to vote. You know what I'm saying? It's about making you see, you know, what, it's so much disinformation, right? In an information age where everybody kind of takes their cue from social media and the Internet, there's so much disinformation being spewed right now. People get frustrated. Be like, you know what? I don't know who to believe. That's the thing I hear all the time from people. I don't know who to believe, right? And that's a concerted effort. You know, that doesn't happen by accident. That's a concerted effort to keep people who are already not fully engaged from even wanting, wanting to be a part of the conversation, from even wanting to be a part of the process, right? And these are not new tools. You know what I'm saying? They're just adapting for a new age, you mm. know, but the idea of skewing the view of people of color and people in oppressed communities, that's as, that's as old as time. You know, that's how they came into power. That's how they kept the power. And that's what they choose in order to keep the power. Michael, I mean, they, say our vote, they try to keep us in. I just want to say one more thing. Yeah, if, yeah. If, if, if voting didn't matter as much as they try to tell people it doesn't matter, why do they fight so hard for us to not use it? One million percent. We it, they say your your voice, your vote, and this is the most pivotal time. We got to make it happen, like now. Facts. Yeah, Michael, you could add on to it. You know, in in the communities I grew up in, you know, there are no lines to vote. Everybody walks in, you vote real easy. They say hello to you. It's real simple. There's no voter suppression. There's no trying to stop white people from voting. They just you know, make it very easy. And when you see these long lines in black communities, you see these doors, you know, folks banging on doors in Georgia to vote, um, desperately wanting to vote just a few weeks ago in the primary uh, in black communities. You know, uh, this is a targeted effort. As Bun said, uh, this has been going on uh, for centuries. Um, I, I want to pick up on something Jim and, and Tamika both said. One is, um, uh, Jim, I agree 100%. Uh, this is not going to be easy to beat Donald Trump. And uh, he is no easy candidate. He knows exactly what he's doing and he knows how to do it. And he's created a hell of a culture war. Um, and he has stoked the flames of the racial anxiety in this country. And Kamala had a line tonight where she said, there is no vaccine for racism. And Tamika, who I admire, and I have not done enough to support you, Tamika, and I'll say that publicly. Uh, and I apologize for not standing up for you the way I should have uh, in the past, but you are a hero of mine and you are on the front lines and you do the work and you've done the work for your entire life. Uh, and I wanna say that when that, I'm gonna fight like hell to get Joe Biden and Kamala Harris elected, but I'm gonna fight like hell to make sure they do the damn thing to take care of the communities they're talking about when they are in office. And that is the only point in doing this work is so people like Tamika 
and Linda Sarsour and Carmen Perez and my son and Angelo Pinto and all those brilliant people who I consider my friends who are on the front lines is that when Joe Biden is the president and when Kamala Harris is the vice president, that there is a seat at the table for those people to demand that their promises are kept, to demand that the voices of black women are heard, to demand, and as an ally, as a white cisgendered man, and I will do everything I possibly can, and if I have not done enough in the past, again, I apologize, but I'll do everything I possibly can now to make sure that these two are elected and these two are also held accountable to the promises that they are making. Accountability is everything. And but how, how do we make sure we got a seat at that table so that a voice could be heard further once they get inside of that building? Well, she, you know, I, I think Tamika it's, ain't got that problem. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, that's not true. They don't want, listen, you know, folk don't be wanting to talk to me. We were, um, you know, we're living in Kentucky right now, 25 uh, leaders, I'm not going to say activists, from across the country have come together through Until Freedom's leadership. We, are to, we took temporary residency here in Kentucky to fight every day for Breonna Taylor. Um, we actually have this weekend a number of, dis uh, well, we're having something called Brianna Con. We all know about the Con conferences, Justice Con, Comic Con, all those things. And um, and so we're having a conference this weekend that is going to focus on Brianna's law and getting it passed across the state of Kentucky. I, I saw today that Pennsylvania um, has um, has um, introduced Brianna's law. I think Virginia other places. And so we're making progress across the nation with Breonna Taylor's story. Um, unfortunately, we have not made progress here in Kentucky to get justice for her family. But I bring all of that up to say, first of all, Kamala mentioned Breonna Taylor tonight, which is a big deal. Um, it's super important to have because, and people don't understand, these speeches, they don't just happen. Like people actually listen and read and check and make sure that whatever is being stated is in line with their beliefs. Again, you know, the values of the, of the campaign. They're not just up there speaking ad hoc. If they say Breonna Taylor, they mean Breonna Taylor and they understand the implications of saying her name in the midst of a, uh, a, a candidate acceptance speech, you know, for the first black woman to make it to that place. That's a big deal. Um, and so I'm glad to hear that. But we were talking around the table about field operations, right? And, and we said, we are in the field. Like there has to be a, a better, to Michael's point, and I appreciate you, Michael, for everything you said, you know, we've worked together on big, big, big stuff. We've been together a long time. So, you know, and, and we were about to get together to meet and talk and then COVID happened, but we have to make sure that we do that. But anyway, um, well, at this table, we were saying there has to be a connection between those of us who are field organizers and these campaigns. And sometimes what happens, I'm not saying this is a Biden campaign issue, I'm just saying that people don't want to necessarily be connected to the people on the ground because it's risky. You know, we're we're protesters. We're out here. But guess what? We just walked through uh, the west side of Louisville and knocked on hundreds of doors. Take we, hmm. we delivered food. We gave out 2,000 boxes of produce. So I don't know who else you want to be out here talking to folks and giving them the message and not a message of Democrats versus Republicans, but a message of truth versus lies, you know, of fact versus fiction, of what is safer for our communities versus what is dangerous. That's happening as we are walking through these streets. And, and Michael says, well, Tamika doesn't have that problem. And yeah, I am in a unique position where people do respect me. I'm on the cover of Vogue, you know, British Vogue, like that's a big deal. But there are activists on the ground across this country that people are not listening to, and yet they want to somehow move their communities and they don't understand that these people are the president of the block, like they're the president of the streets and you better go get them and somebody better get them quick. So since Michael is the, uh, is he is our resident white man, it is his job to go talk to other white people 
on these campaigns and tell them they need to go get the street organizers that's out there with Ray Ray and Keisha that can help to move things along. And that's just, these 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 folks. I walked around today and I didn't see signage in the community that I need to see. We have Amy McGrath running against um, uh, uh, Mr. Mitch McConnell. I need, I need, I, Michael, help us. We got to do it. We got to, we, we got to galvanize, man. This is, uh, once Absolutely. again, this, this is a pivotal year. You got to get to the polls, um, all levels of government. This is a powerful uh, right. panel. We, 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 this is a powerful panel. We got to Jim go. Let Jim got one last thing, though. Let Jim. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I just want to. I just want to bounce off what Tamika was saying about Ray Ray and um. Like so, my my outlook on leaders in my hood are not the same outlook on the people that think the leaders mm -hmm. of those communities are. Most of the leaders we don't pay attention to. We don't give a fuck about them niggas in the hood. But if you have people like myself who I can go to the block. And tell 10 niggas, yo, go to the liquor store. Yo, go get us some smoke. Yo, tell Shorty and them go up there, go get sneakers for the whole block. Yo, it's people like us that's really moving the community is the people that need to be talked to to help them right. push the narrative to get people to vote. And people always right. miss that. We not looking, nine times out of 10, the person that they think is the leader of the community is not valid in our community. The way he dresses is not valid. Nine times out of 10, he's lacking in financials, so he can't support the stuff that he's talking about. We need to see somebody that really can make a difference, somebody with some money, somebody with some power, somebody that can make things move. And nine times out of 10, those are the hustlers that's in that community. The hustlers are the Also the artists, man. Also- uh, Yeah, the artists. The artists should be responsible on their own. I shouldn't have to talk about our, our artists being responsible, and I'm tired of saying that, because artists know how powerful they are. We're like superheroes to the kids. Right. You yeah. did? But when you get directly into that community, you need to find the right people that can push the community. The artists only could do but so much. They selfish. They don't understand the power that they possess. I've been going through this for years with these artists. They're very simple and don't want to entangle in, in political views and don't understand the big scheme of it. When it's all about leadership and getting the people to do the right thing, they don't they don't see that. But in the hood, there are a lot of people that understand that and they've been doing that vicariously, just living the regular person they are and making sure the hood stays together. These are the people we need to find. But these are the people that the media in America might find to be the criminals, the crooks, oh, they're no good. But these are the people that push the community to do the right thing and help the community out. We put up against bad circumstances, so we do what we got to do to make some money. But that doesn't mean that these people are terrible people. Jim right. Jones for president. We chose <laughs> the thank, thank, thank you, everybody, for coming oh, on tonight. Man. Powerful. We need more time. We, we got to do some when we bring y'all back when we get closer to the election. Thank God we got artists like Jim Jones. We got artists like Bun B using their voice. Shout out to our brother Trader Truth, who's always on the front line. He was he was supposed to be always on tonight. Relief Trader Truth is in the streets. I know he's with me. Kentucky with me. He's living yeah. with us one of the 25 leaders and he is, he took Tamika Palmer, Breonna Taylor's mother out today to get her out, took her to a, a, a what's his name? Lord, the comedian, Dave Chappelle uh, show tonight. So him and my yes. son are with Tamika tonight. That's what they're doing. Yes. Trey, Trey is always doing above and beyond. I love everybody here. Love y'all. All, all of you are needed. Man, uh, much thank love. you so much. Right now, we're going to go to DJ Cassidy and a special performance from Maya B. We got to bring this panel back. I appreciate y'all. Appreciate you, Shaheen. Peace, y'all.